Hi again. So let's discuss needle depth. We've talked a bit about angling your needles, whether you're going to needle up or down, putting your needles in and out, like which direction you're going to go. But now, how deep do your needles go? Again, this is a very mini lesson. There's so much more to it than what I'm saying, but there are some general rules. So um, in our spring video, we did talk about how um, you want to needle at the hair level, much more superficial, because that's where the energy is. So let's talk about superficial versus deep needling. So Again, this is very general. Uh, so superficial needling. You're going to do this more in a patient who is thinner. You're going to uh, do more superficial for someone who might have a Young disease. So perhaps they have an EPI, and right, the EPI is sitting at the top in the coulee, which is a level between the skin and the muscles. So you want to actually insert your needle much more shallow at that level. Um, otherwise, you could actually drive the pathogen in further. So do you know when you're doing an EPI treatment to do very shallow needling. Um, you also uh, um, might have a heat disease or itching, something that's really affecting the surface of the skin. Maybe there's rashes and itch. Well, superficial needling is going to do much better than a deep needling. In fact, in the Huang Ni Jing, they say if you needle too deep with this kind of condition, you can actually cause abscesses because you're actually taking the energy in deeper. deeper. Uh, also in the spring and summer because it, the energy in the, is young and it's up sitting at the top so you can access that energy by needling at a superficial level. Now a really weird part is uh, superficial needling is also done a lot more with a weak and deficient pulse and, uh, and quite often with deficient syndromes. The reason for this is because you don't want to be driving in really deep and really churning their chi up too much. You're going to go a little bit more superficial and allow energy to come to the needle and you can use qigong techniques, you can use needling techniques to help to bring energy to the area. You can also do superficial needling if someone has very fast chi and smooth chi. So the chi is smooth, uh, um, moving quickly and moving very smoothly in their body. They seem to be kind of a fast chi person. They're moving quickly and they're um, well, moving quickly. So that's another reason to consider superficial needling. Now, when it comes to deeper needling, um, now we're going to look at all the exact opposites. So you might do deeper needling on an obese patient. You might do deeper needling for yin conditions cold conditions, more excess conditions, that you really need to be reaching deep into the body and you need to be churning and moving that chi at a deeper level, right? Because a yin condition will be deeper, a cold condition will probably be deeper, um, and an excess condition will need that deeper churn to it, whereas a deficient condition, you're doing the opposite. Okay, also guess what seasons? You might needle deeper in the fall and also the winter. And again, usually the patient's constitution or pattern is addressed before you start doing seasonal needling. Um, but again, the cheese can be running deeper, so you could you could go deeper. Also, if someone has a slower and, and more uneven chi, so perhaps the person is even slower in nature. Their, their movements are slower, um, maybe even their thinking is a bit slower, or they're just a more relaxed kind of yin person. So in general, a yin person might need a bit more uh, deeper needling than someone who's very young and active might be a bit need a bit more superficial needling. So just kind of keep those in your mind and then when you go in your clinic next, your student clinic or actual practice, just start palpating where you're feeling the chi in the body. Do you have to push really deep to find the pulse? Is the pulse flying out of the top? Can you almost see the pulse in the wrist? Is the person really flushed on their skin? Are they very pale, cool, maybe even really moist skin? Do they have a young disease, a yin disease? Are they overweight? Are they underweight? Um, what season is it? Kind of consider all those things and then as you insert your needle, see where the chi is really meeting you, right? You want to always keep your mind at the end of the needle and really feel through your fingers through the needle of when you're contacting chi, that fish grabbing a hook feeling. So very, very uh, superficial lesson on a deep subject, but um, do start playing with that and do a little research on your own to learn a bit deeper. Grab your Huang Di Nei Jings and start studying because again, it's the art of acupuncture is that eternal learning of what level, what angle, which points, right? It's a constant challenge, which is why it's such an exciting profession.